Okay, so I think that we're into the very last bit of this stage. So what we need to do is we need to fit the on-off switch because it is a real pain if you have to keep opening and shutting a hatch of some kind to be able to turn it on or off. So we'll take the wheel off. I'm actually going to remove the wheel arch as well, just so that we can get to everything. Measure out about 12 millimeters along this edge here and try and get it roughly central. Then chop it down until you get to about the line across here. Score it across and then just bend out with the pliers. Clean it up. Okay, that should be a good fit for our on off switch. That's going to sit in there and that looks fine. And then taking the marker pen, mark the very centres of the holes. One and a half millimetre drill bit. That should be fine. And then secure with a couple of two millimetre bolts. We're going to need to get rid of these two little tabs here. And find a way of securing the lid down when the model is being used. And if you look to see where this tab is here, we're going to want to be about there. So it's kind of in line with it and probably about four or five millimetres down. So I'll just make a quick hole there, making sure I'm holding the lid down firmly and just go straight through all of it. So we're going to want to do the same thing at the back and actually you want the hole quite close to the top and you just want to go straight through. So, so we've ended up with the hole here, hole there, hole there and a hole there. These holes all need to be enlarged to two and a half millimetres. And tapped. The next thing which I want to do is I want to install the mount for the aerials. So taking the dedicated 3D part printed off for that purpose, some isopropanol alcohol, clean inside there, clean the back of the part, double sided sticky foam tape, that goes inside there, about there, and that sticks. Okay, so clip them in there like that, uh, as far forward as possible really. What I found with the other one was it was actually better if I didn't have these two wires being parallel to each other. So one of them just bend around like that and then the other one I'll just allow it to be straight. Put the wheel arch back on. Actually one thing which I have noticed is that when this is on it actually helps hold the motor in even better which was something that I didn't even think of when I was doing the design. Put the wheel on. And then we're going to need a couple of machine bolts. This one is 12 millimeters, this one is four millimeters. It's quite handy having this selection. And then the longer one is going to go in the back here. Over time these will loosen up, but having tapped them we've got somewhere to start. With my other one they're actually hand loose now so that I can put the cover on and off without having to use this, but for the first few times I did. And then taking our battery, plug it in, like so. Tuck it all away as best you can. And that should sit like that. So you can see why that little plate over the servo is so useful because the battery is not going to be able to interfere with the steering arm. And then, and then the receiver is going to want to go this way around and you may want to tidy your own wires up a little bit but this is just to show you that everything does fit in. Like so.
the receiver needs to go quite well towards the back. And then with a bit of luck, you can dot the screw at the back. And similarly the one on the side. You may have found, like I have, that actually when this is screwed down, that the bottom is pulling out a little bit. That's very easy to rectify. And what we're going to do is just make a small hole with the one and a half millimeter drill bit about there. So roughly in the center of this tab and quite close to the top. Push it in, drill all the way through. Enlarge the hole ever so slightly and then using a two millimeter bolt just pull it all together and there we have it the battery hatch secured and a quick test confirms that everything is still working fine okay so this fourth build stage is probably the most challenging of the whole lot having got this far all we've really got to worry about now is the main arm and we've done most of the preparation for that already. We've got the servo in there. We've got the wires ready to power the actuator arm. And we've got the receiver extension wire for the bucket. Okay, so if you've managed to stick with it this far, and in particular, if you've managed to build it as far as this, you really are almost there. In the final video, we're going to be sorting out the telescopic arm, making it move up and down with the servo we already installed, extending and retracting, and of course the bucket moving, and using the free mix on the transmitter, programming the lifting of the arm and the angle of the fork of the bucket so that they stay the same at all of the different angles of the main arm. I hope that you're finding this video series useful, interesting and easy to follow. Please feel free to post any comments or questions that you may have and until the next time thank you very much for watching.